Hello, guys. Hi. Happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday in quarantine life in America and around the world. How's everybody doing today? Looking forward to having some time with you at the prayer wall today as people are starting to jump on. Hello. Good afternoon. Pauline's on. A lot of you guys are jumping on Instagram. Here I sit again. I know you probably think I live at this wall. Um, definitely every day at noon, I'm at the wall. Uh, hi, guys, as you're jumping on. Hi, Doreen. Hi, Bobby Joe, Jamie. And uh, you guys are all jumping on Instagram. So it's Tuesday. Beautiful, beautiful afternoon. The sun is out in California again, and spirits are lifted. We just finished our staff meeting here at Influence Church and had a great time with our staff this morning, praying and beginning to ask God what's our next, what's our new. Um, good morning. Hey, guys, I love looking forward to this time. Hi, Jamie, me too with you guys. Hello, beautiful. Uh, Bobby Joe is always hello, beautiful. That just, we need to get you a shirt that just says hello, beautiful. You're always so good about greeting us that way. Which, by the way, speaking of fashion, I'm so excited. We are having really cool masks made. Um, actually, they're ready. They're, we're going to be selling them on Instagram. And they say, be the girl. And they've got our logo for Women of Influence. And they're so cute. They go darling with our be the girl shirts. So I know that Rachel right now is doing a photo shoot with that. And we will have those available on Instagram and other locations. So uh, this day and age that we live of mask and everything else, we thought we might as well provide them. And we were just talking, even after the quarantine is over and the mask come off, I'm sure our new normal will be having a mask in our purse that we'll just take with us, don't you think? What do you think? Thumbs, hearts up. Um, if you're at an airport, you'll probably be wearing them and different locations. So might as well keep these masks in your purse. I think it's going to be part of our new normal coming out of COVID-19. So guys, um, I got up this morning and I'm excited. You know, it's Tuesday. So uh, yeah, the hearts are going up. You guys are green. Um, it's Tuesday and it would be the night that we'd be together for Women of Influence for our coaching series. And tonight, our topic is um, how to handle difficult people. How to handle difficult people. Now, you guys, when I put this coaching series together and I chose the topics six months ago, it was one of the coaching topics that I, I coach people on. How do I deal with you know that person, that difficult person? But as I prepared to bring the message for tonight, I realized I was that person. I am the difficult person. COVID-19 has just brought stuff out in us. What do you guys think? Do you agree with me? Especially being at home with family members and having the pressure of schooling and education and cooking and laundry and not being able to get out and socialize and all of the things that I'm going to equate to dealing with difficult people, um, I realize I'm doing these things. So I'm I'm encouraged for tonight. I want you guys to join me at 630. If you're our small group leaders with Women of Influence, make sure that you get a hold of your group and uh, you do your questions online together, do some watch parties. But join us tonight at 630 on our Women of Influence page for a continuation of our coaching series, Being Your Best in 2020. And I think I brought a little bit of humor to our message tonight, so I'm looking forward to it. Well, guys, I'm going to talk to you uh, for a few minutes before we get into prayer about um, what are you doing in the waiting room? What are you doing in the waiting room? You know, I talked to you guys a few days ago about how the number 20 in the Bible, um, one of the indications of the number 20 is it means to wait. And there are a lot of stories in the Bible of that 20-year period and how it was an implication of a waiting period and how in 2020 it's interesting how we're in a wait and so this morning, as I began thinking about this, because I tried to take everything and I say, how am I spiritually processing that? So I thought to myself, what do I do when I'm in a waiting room? And have you ever gone to the waiting room to a doctor or a dentist or something, and you sit there and you're waiting and you're frustrated because you have to wait? Now listen, because there's some good spiritual application here. You're frustrated because you have to wait. Why do you stay? You stay in the waiting room because you know that you're there because someone's going to give you some good advice on the other side. Someone's going to help you with your problem. You sit there and you wait because you're going to see the great physician knowing that he's going to help you with your problem. Or you wouldn't sit in the waiting room. Well, guys, I believe we're in a waiting room. 
We are in a waiting room of time right now as we're quarantined through COVID-19. And my question to you is, what are you doing in the waiting room before you go see the physician? The physician, as we know, is the great physician, and that's Christ. And he has a word for us as we're sitting in this incubation period. So my question is, what do you do in the waiting room? I'd love to hear some of your responses as we're sitting here. Do you sit in the waiting room frustrated, wondering, did I get in before they did? Will, they, will their name get called before me? How much longer? Wait, my appointment was at 2, and it's already 2.20. And do you waste the time in the waiting room? Or do you go to the waiting room knowing, I might wait. So I'm going to take a book. I'm going to get some work done. I've got my phone. I've got some emails. And so you're productive in the waiting room. So my question to you is, what are you doing right now in your waiting room? And your waiting room is this period of time before we're given freedom to go back out. You guys, God wants to do something right now in this waiting period in your life like you would not believe if told. And I mean to be intentional. Be intentional with your time, whether that's getting up early, uh, going to bed later, going on a walk journaling, praying. There's something he wants to do in the waiting room. So I began thinking, let me give you a scripture. And it's really good. It's in Matthew 24, 38. And it says, for in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking. They were marrying and giving a merry life up into the day that Noah entered the ark. Now, this is really a good, remember when we're given scriptures and when we're given types um, in the Bible, it's to teach us a lesson. So think about this. Life was just going on. They were eating and drinking and marrying, and life was just great until the day that Noah went in the ark and the door closed. And that's what's just happened to us. We've been eating and drinking, and we're merry, and everything's happy, and life's going on, and the abundance, and the cray-cray, the craziness, reality TV, crazy people, crazy world. And then Noah went in the ark. And I think what happened when the door shut, and that's what just happened to us with COVID-19, there was protection inside the ark. That was Noah's waiting room. Noah, Mrs. Noah, the three sons and their daughters. There were eight of them in the ark. So think of this waiting room as your ark. And what are you doing in the ark? Craziness is going all around while God protected Noah and his family in the ark. What you might not know is how long they had to wait in the ark before they stepped off the ark. The Bible tells us that it, that it rained and flooded for 150 days, and then he stayed another several, up to another 100 plus days on the ark. Some people estimate up to 371 days on the ark. That's over a year that they were in their waiting room, that they sat in the ark, and God had to protect them. And I'm asking you right now, just in all sincerity, I don't know if this is going to go another week, another month, another four or five months, but I don't want you to look back and say, I wasted time that could have been productive time. God wants to take this time and do something new. And I brought you a message yesterday and talked to you for a few minutes about the great awakenings in America, the first great awakening, the second great awakening, um, things like the Jesus movement. And God's spirit was moving, moving and revival coming. And again, we've said over and over, over and over that we've prayed for revival. What if God is stirring in our hearts. And here's my thought. I, I'm, I don't want to get back to our, quote, normal, whatever that new normal is going to look like, too quickly that we don't get the good out of the crisis. Come on now. Can you give me some hearts on that one? Because, guys, here's the thing. we got to get the good out of this crisis, whether it's ourself individually, our families, our society, or our country. And sometimes when we get out of crises too quickly, we revert back to old habits. So in the midst of this waiting room right now, we are waiting patiently for the great physician to call our name, to come in and give us the prescription for our ailment. You, you, get, the, you get the picture of the waiting room, but we've got to sit and wait. So what are you doing in the waiting room? Noah still had to, had, he had the animals, he had to do life, he had to figure out what his new normal was on the ark for 371 days before he got off the ark and then really reestablish the world. So we are going to reestablish, and I don't pray to God it's not 371 days for us to be in our waiting room, 
but what are you doing? So I believe ideas and inventions and passions. I believe clarity. I believe a tenderness of heart. I believe a spirit of revival. Um, one thing I've been praying is, God, would you give me, would you give me the spirit of wisdom, insight, and revelation? And those are the three things we're going to pray for today at our wall. God, would you give me the spirit of insight, wisdom, and revelation. So when I come out of this, I have new insight. I see things with spiritual eyes. I see things with the wisdom you give me, with the knowledge that comes from you, with insight. You guys, um, this morning as I was going through the news feeds, and it, it's interesting how right now, um, you know, there's drones, and this just happened in um, Florida, where there are people on the beaches, so they have drones out on the beaches, and the drones with the microphones are saying, you know, we see you, you're not six feet apart, we know who you are, um, isolate or go home, and, um, you know, separate or go home, and there's these drones now, matter of fact, my, uh, my husband and I just had a drone over our house, and so we know that li literally the military are using these drones right now to watch us and monitor us, and our world is changing. Our government's changing the way, um, whether you want to call it an invasion of privacy. I, I liked one way that it was said this morning on Fox News, a slow death of civil, civil liberties in the name of public safety. A slow death of civil, civil liberties in the name of public safety. And look, our world's changing. And our government, Big Brother, is watching us like we've never been watched before. And, and what we have to pray for as the church is that God will give us wisdom and insight to see these things. We have to know the signs and the times and the seasons. And we can't get go caught, so caught up in what the world is saying and what the media is saying it, that we don't have wisdom. So what we have to do, that's our prayer today. God, te God, would you show me? Would you spiritually show me what I don't see with my physical eye? That's a legitimate prayer where God begins to show you in your spirit. And you're like, oh my gosh, I see with spiritual eyes things that I don't see with my human natural eye. So that's what we want to pray for. Um, this is your time to evaluate you. I mentioned on Saturday when we were having our, our Saturday Club story time, um, story club, I talked about how this is a great time for you to evaluate you. Come on, girlfriend, let me tell you right now. Listen to me. Get to know you. Look in the mirror and know what you're made of. What's your stock? How strong are you? How do you make it through crisis? What do you do in times of crisis? I love this quote by Dolly Parton. I want to quote it. I think it's so good. She says, find out who you are and do it on purpose. So through this, I, I, I admit in my time I'm going to teach you tonight that I find out, found out I'm a little more difficult than I thought I was. I question some things and I get frustrated and I only, I only can go this far before I react or respond. And I had to evaluate me. What is it, Tammy? You have to be able to hand a, handle crises better than this. Listen, listen to me. This is not the last crisis for us. This is a testing ground for us. This is a proving ground for us. There will be more tests to come as we draw closer to the end days. So we get to look and say, what are we made of? How do I handle crisis under pressure without re responding and reacting um, in a bad way. So this this is a good time for us. It's a good time to evaluate ourselves. This is time for us to look at our situation and ask ourselves, how am I going to come out of this? There's a scripture in 1 Corinthians 13, 12. Listen, it says, For we now know only a reflection as in a mirror, but then we shall see face to face. Now I only see in part, but then I will know fully. So my question to you is right now, we can only see a little bit. But as we begin to pray supernaturally, and that's what this time, that's why it's called it the waiting room. What am I doing as I calm down and as I reflect and as I look realistically and honestly and biblically with who I am, what my environment's like and where I'm going to go from here. God, show me, show me what you want me to see. So I believe that God wants to bring some good from this. I believe that God wants to do some good. You know, we know that story in uh, Genesis 15, and it's a story of Joseph. I've referred to this before. And remember, his brother sold him into slavery, and it's like, are you kidding me? What are you guys? You're his brothers. What are you doing? But when the time came 
for them during the famine to need a way out, God had provided the brother Joseph, who he had elevated to second in command only under the Pharaoh. And when they came for food during the famine, Joseph was able to look at them and say, what you meant for evil, God caused for good. Now listen, listen, what we might think that the enemy has brought for evil. I don't know if you've lost a job. I don't know if you're stuck at home. I don't know if you're frustrated. I don't know if you feel weak. But what the enemy has brought, just like Joseph said for evil, at the right time, God elevated Joseph to be in the right place to provide for his family. And I'm telling you, if you can just be steadfast and strong and secure, Good is going to come out of this, and God's going to place you on a platform at the right time when he needs you when everyone else is weak. So that's what this time is for. Do not waste this time. The Bible says do not despise small beginnings, and this is a small beginning of rebirthing something fresh and something new. So as we go to the prayer wall today, I want you to join me, and we're going to begin to pray for these three things, wisdom, wisdom insight and revelation but over yourself over yourself come on mama come on girlfriend i want you to be the best woman of influence woman of character woman of dignity push past the negativity the 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 the, the, the difficulty the comments you're making your anger your fear push past that and ask god give me your wisdom Give me your insight and give me your revelation. Father God, as we come to the wall now and we've just talked about we are in a waiting room of incubation just like Noah was on the ark. And God, you have put us in safety right now. We don't want to waste this time. We don't want to waste this time. We're going to pray in Jesus' name that you would give us supernatural, divine wisdom insight and revelation and many of us don't even know what that means those words are so big and they're so spiritual that it's hard for us to even know but god in my spirit what you're teaching me is that you'll teach me what to say and where to go tammy don't go there don't say that that's wisdom insight how to act and how to respond how maybe start a business or speak to a person, how to wait or how to move. Revelation, as I read through the book of Revelation, you tell me that my eyes would be open, that I would see things, I would see in heaven what you want to bring to earth. That's wisdom, insight, and revelation. So we use those words because they're biblical words and the words you tell us to pray over ourselves. So we right now in the name of Jesus agree together as women and any men that are also on this feed right now in Jesus' name, what we pray is that we would be your children and we're calling from heaven that you give us spiritual insight, wisdom, and revelation. How to act, how to respond, how to move, how to see the future. God, would you give us prophetic words? Would you give us prophetic insight? We prophesy in Jesus' name to being healthy, to being whole, to being successful and to being prosperous. We prophesy in Jesus' name. We prophesy over ourselves. We prophesy over our family. We prophesy over our businesses. We prophesy over our nation in Jesus' name. You give us the authority to prophesy. And so we do so, God. We want to be supernatural spiritual beings as your children. And God, I believe this crisis has come at a time in our nation and in our world for us to realign ourselves to the Spirit of God. This is just a birth pang of the steps to come. So teach us how to be strong and not to be weak and not to be idle. Father, teach us how to be aggressive and tenacious. Teach us how to think. Teach us how to write and to research and to be strong. I just feel in my spirit right now, I need to say to somebody, listen, this isn't a time for you to sit around and to be idle and just to eat and to drink and to be lazy. That's exactly what the Bible tells us they were doing before the times of Noah, eating and drinking and idle. This is a time for you to exercise your mind and your body. This, Listen, I'm prophesying over you right now. This is a time for you to be sharp, go for walks, do push-ups, 
do sit-ups. You're in training. This is time for you to be in training. When you come out of this, we need to be stronger. We don't want to have regrets that we just sat around and ate, that we sat around and did nothing with ourselves. that we that we were idle. This is not a time. Come on. This is a time for us to be strong. So my challenge, we are five weeks into this. My, my challenge to you right now is to put yourself on a regimen, a regimen of eating healthy, a regimen of exercising, a regimen of writing and rehearsing and reciting so when we come out of this think of yourself as being in a spiritual boot camp so when you come out of this my friend listen to me when you come out of this you're gonna be so strong the what whatever assignment God has for you you are prepared for it because in this season in the waiting room you are, pre pre are preparing yourself for your assignment I don't know where that came from that's not in my notes and I wasn't gonna say it but God just led me to say that we are in spiritual boot camp so while you're in the waiting room, while you're in your ark, while you are waiting during this time of COVID-19, quarantine and isolation, it is time for you to be strong. So what I want us to do, man, man some of you might go, hey, here's some healthy recipes I'm going to share. Here's a fitness routine I'm going to share. Come on, women of influence, we can do this together. We're going to come out of this so strong, whether it be in May or June. Don't you find so amazing how God gave us the word strong to be our women's conference just a few weeks ago, how he was prepare, preparing us prophetically to say, I want some strong women. You are strong. So be the girl, be the girl and be strong because God is bringing wisdom, insight and revelation. So guys, I'm so excited. I'm excited about what God is doing. I love you. I love you. I want us to interact. Um, I'm going to just start to read a few of these feeds as you guys are responding right now. Toby, so good to see you again. And I want to encourage you uh, what we're doing with Grandma's House and we love you and other non-profs. Um, I'm very excited about what God's doing here. Um, I love the strong. I love, is that your last name? Oh my gosh. Is it um, Sina? strong hi serve all hi so good to have you on i love your name naomi of course you are here and uh, so many of you are talking right now rosio i pray for the spirit of wisdom and revelation amen and amen selena i love you i love you and temecula and uh, i'll talk with you later but i'm just gonna tell you this right now my husband and i pastor phil and i are just talking about what i believe god wants to do something with influence church in temecula and i'm just gonna call it out right now i'm believing that god's gonna have an influence um campus or satellite or something in Temecula and uh, I'm believing that God's stirring some great things we just had someone in um, Orlando contact us and ask if we'd be willing to start a satellite of influence church in Orlando do you see what God's doing come on girls this is not a time for us to weep this is not a time for us to regret. This is a time for us to plan and lead and strategize and build. This is our time. I am so excited about what God is doing. Um, oh my goodness, my goodness, I'm so excited. Lisa, just got just saw Lisa in staff meeting and love Lisa and love you and all that you're doing, the work with the podcast. Just so you guys know, all of these uh, prayer times at the wall are on my podcast. So if you want to look at my website, you can send these to anyone. Please share these because I think these prayer times are powerful and important um, to, to share. There's so many of you talking. I'm just loving this. Hi, Gigi. So good to see you again. Thank you for sharing. And Irene and Pauline. And um, oh, I love you girls so much. Cynthia, of course, and Diane, uh, Laura. Look at all you guys, Christy. Um, amen and amen and amen. So guys, let me just, how about if we just end this way? How about if we give ourselves a prophetic word? How about if we end together that you start to out of the mouth, out of your mouth, you start prophesying over yourself. You start prophesying over yourself that you would have a clear mind and a clean mind. Pastor Phil talked to us this morning in staff meeting about our mind, our will, and our emotions. Listen, if you're having a bad day or a sad day, do you know where it's starts it starts in your mind you decide in your mind where you're going to go with your day your mind your will and your emotions so your mind thinks it and then you get to will it whether I'm going to receive it or not receive it and from the will it goes to your emotions so you're not sad by emotions first you're sad by your mind and you literally can and he walked us through it was so good so I say to myself today I'm just feeling a little blue I'm kind of feeling a little sad. 
if you find yourself saying that. And that is a real emotion. So you have to backtrack to the mind. You can't let your emotions run your mind. So you go back and go, wait a minute. Do I have a roof over my head? Do I have food on my table? Do I know God is my savior? Do I have friends I can reach out to? Do I have clothes I can put on my back? And you literally have to start here in processing the emotions. And this is what we have to learn. The Bible says, take every thought captive by renewing your mind. And when you have a positive mind, even when you're feeling negative and blue, is it true? Yeah, life's different. I'm feeling it different. Maybe I've lost my job. Maybe I'm frustrated. Don't let that be your reality. Let truth be your reality, that the word of God tells you that he will walk with you through every difficulty. He will guide you. He will equip you, and he will be with you. Do you see how actually feeding your mind will take you into your emotions and change your emotions? See, guys, this is warfare. Listen to me. This is spiritual warfare. And if we can learn to do this through crises, Okay, you're ahead of the game. So this is the place we got to learn how to battle our mind, our will, and our emotions. Amen. Woohoo! All right. So I want you to prophetically give yourself a word right now. So this morning when I got up, I began to prophetically speak over myself and said, I will not be a negative person. I'm not going to be negative to my husband. I'm not going to be negative to myself. I'm going to learn to speak life over myself. I'm going to learn scriptures. I'm going to look in the mirror. Now, I can do it right now because I'm on live stream with you, right? Or Facebook live. So I see myself. Tammy, Tammy, God loves you. God protects you. God's with you through this. God is so proud of you and how you're working so tenaciously to try to empower women and build women up. Now, do you see what I'm doing is I'm prophetically giving myself purpose. I'm prophetically giving myself love from the Father by Scripture. And that's what you have to learn to do. I've taught you guys, this woman of influence, that the greatest war you'll ever fight is the war of the mirror. Looking in the, in the mirror. If you can win the war with the woman in the mirror, you can win the war. That's what you got to do. You got to win the war with yourself. So I believe as women of influence, God is, is growing us up. He's empowering us. And we're going to come out of this as a strong, strong church, a strong um, body of believers and a strong nation. So I love you guys so much. I miss you. I want to encourage you to be a part of Women of Influence tonight at 630. We'll start with some worship music and then we'll go into my teaching time and into your small groups. So let me just look. Anybody have anything they want to share before we get off? Hi, Valerie. Love, love, love you. Um, I love this. Totally was on wisdom. Amen. I love it. Hi, Denise. Hey, I want to do a shout out to Denise Sweeney, who's on, who works at Ralph's. And I thank you. I consider you a first responder. You have been up there working tenaciously with our food and helping us and all of you people that are so, so good to help us. We love you. And I just want to shout out to you. I love you. And I appreciate you so much, Denise. Um, and Judy, good to have you join us. Uh, Toby, um, exactly process the emotions renew your mind amen we have a roof we have over our head amen thank you for just prophetically saying that over yourself helen amen amen we love you selena lord help us take every thought captive right selena because it's so easy it's so easy to look at our circumstances you look at your house and you feel like will i ever clean it again will i ever make my bed again will i ever get on my pajamas again will i ever eat out again hey what are you doing with your now what are you doing with your today, right? Hi, Irene. I love you. I love you. You have the prettiest smile. I love you, and you just make me smile. And Christy, I, oh, hello. I, you also one of those just smiley, happy people. So you guys bring so much joy to my heart. Um, and Pauline, of course, with your English accent, and we love you. And I just want to shout out to people because I want you to know I love you, and we are in this together, and we are coming back together stronger than ever. And we are going, look, Look, we can't be weak Christians anymore, guys. We have to be strong. We have to have a backbone. We have to know the word of God. And with, with the government going the way it is, we got to stand strong for our rights as Christians and the word of God. I don't know where that came from. I just wanted to say it. We had, that's that wisdom and insight and revelation. Because believe me, we're going to come out of this. Um, and I'm only saying this because I'm reading so much. We're there are literally some cities where the police are circling churches and, 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 and ticketing and, and giving citations to people who are walking in churches. Come on now. And yet I can go to Target and I can go to the grocery store. So there's something happening. Let's just be honest. 
But that's why the church has to be strong and steadfast and know the word of God and know our rights. So we're going to come out of this different, but we're going to come out of this strong. Amen. Amen. I'm loving you guys are all talking today and I'm loving it. My, uh, my life is ordered and purposed. Amen, Valerie. Okay, guys. Well, I love you. Our time is up for today. We've been about 30 minutes and I love our time together. We'll be back here. We're going to finish out this week at the wall every day at noon. And then I'm going to share with you some new ideas I have starting next week. We'll be going into week six next week. Um, this is week five this week, right? So um, crazy times we're living in. Again, please shoot me an email or an Instagram um, message on ideas and thoughts. But by next week, I literally want to have this as a place where you're sending your requests to me and we're putting them in the wall and we're praying together at the wall. So we'll do that next week. I love you guys so much. Have a wonderful day. I'll see you tomorrow at noon. God bless you guys. I love you. Bye-bye.